What up? <laughs> that was a really endearing intro. I know Hello, everyone's welcome. Excited. Like we just so excited to see everybody. Right? I know it's great. I feel I feel like a kindergarten teacher. Yeah. I feel like Joey. <laughs> that's what I feel like right now. Okay. I feel like the one member that's not here today. Yeah. <laughs> I miss him already. Welcome to the Joystick Show, episode ninety three. We're getting Woo. up there. Hey, I don't know the word. I know like octogenarians is for the 80, 80 year old people. I don't know oh. who the nineties are. It'd be know? it'd be like no. nine. The, it, the nano. Nuev to Jajarians. Yeah, you know, that, totally. Like that. That, that's it. And uh, you know, we're here celebrating a good old week yeah. in the lives of Bobby Dylan and Jerry. A very, very before yeah. we uh, get cracking into that, uh like the video. Yeah. Very like this important. video. This, this episode 93 in like fact, it go you know you, you don't even have to pause the video because you could just you know scroll wheel down real yeah. quick a little bit click scroll wheel back you're back yeah. you're watching the show now and get a bigger monitor so it all fits on one yeah, thing exactly. you just, in fact unlike the video and then like it again yeah do it twice yeah. that's awesome mm-hmm. and while mm-hmm. you're at it yeah Hit subscribe. You're already on, you know, scroll down. Two mm-hmm. birds, one stone. You hit subscribe. And now oh, you're boom. subscribed to Team Yeah, Justin. and then part three is when you're done, we tell you to comment something. Mm-hmm. And then you fucking comment. You're going gonna to be excited. This is, this is going to be fun. All <laughs> right? You already need to take a deep dive, delve into the world oh, of shit. Team Joystick. Damn. Who educates and entertains their uh, their guests every single week. Oh, Dig wow. Through. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know I like this. to start. I'll just, start. Uh, I'll start for sure. Go for it. Uh, so I watch a lot of education. This edutainment. What was it? What's the word that Ed- we use? Edutainment. Edutainment. Yeah. I watch a lot of that. I realized because I watch a lot of YouTube content that's both entertainment and educational. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. That's the genre I've been watching this whole time. I ain't even fucking know. Right? Yeah, right. But I also watch a lot of horror content specifically mm. like you know not only because a lot of it's like true crime and murder but then there's also just like disturbing, disturbing stuff. mysteries yeah. and other types of who is a bigfoot is it a murderer you know yeah, you yeah, really yeah. don't know um but the problem with these videos is that uh the video starts with like the intro right so it's always like a spooky voice talking yeah, about yeah. or it's like a really deep voice a like little, someone uh, like, like a droning sound yeah, yeah 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 or just like corpse husband or like a deep yeah, voice yeah, type yeah. of guy but then after the intro, they cut to my favorite, which is the ad read in the same fucking spooky voice. So oh, it would just I be like, so a man stalked his prey, killing five people, three of them children. If you don't want to be stalked, get NordVPN. It's like, oh my, oh god. my god, man, really? That sounds incredible. And then other times they don't segue it. And it's just like, now I have to hear this creepy man talk about HelloFresh, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you can make tabbouleh salad. It's like, bro, what? Like, Forensics was not able to find a hair follicle at the scene. If only he used keeps. <laughs> or, or it was like, or it was like, made that you use that to do Manscaped, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like, get rid of DNA. Man, whatever. if only mm-hmm. like, you know, we had a sponsor, like actually, right. and then we could segue this perfectly and yeah. be like, speaking of yeah. sponsors. Yeah, on the intro read. We don't have one. But uh, despite all those horror videos, that's not the most horrifying thing I've seen this week. Uh-huh. Uh, and that, yeah, so... I saw a video earlier today that really rocked my world. Okay. And we're not going to play it to spare the people here. Okay. But I'll, I'll set this up, okay? This is by far the creepiest thing I've ever witnessed, all right? Uh-huh. So, uh, the Mets are on tonight. Got Favorite, it. I love the Mets, right? And uh, they're facing the Los Angeles Angels. Got it. Who have lost like 14 out of 15 games or something. They're really struggling right now. Mm-hmm. So, to help promote themselves like doing better, they all walked up. Like when you go up to bat, you get to pick a walk up yeah. song. They all picked Photograph by Nickelback. <laughs> and this was supposed to like be like a curse breaker. Okay. Like, hey, we all pick like a horrible song. That way it like outweighs the horribleness. Yeah. yeah and yeah, then yeah. as they go up, they start playing different Nickelback songs. Uh-huh. I think they may have gotten and they won that game. And they all and they won. So it was like they almost made it through like the entire Nickelback discography. That's which is insane. which is wow. crazy. Uh, and so, uh, related to this, you might go, Hey, what's creepy about this? Um, a journalist or like a famous television personality, his name's Jeff Passan. He's like the kind of like, he breaks all the trades. Like in NBA, it's Wodge. It's like, it's like the guy, guy, he's like the insider Mm -hmm. man type of guy. Mm -hmm. He thought it'd be great to do a singing photograph by Nickelback in his infamous Elmo voice. Okay. And he did this wearing like a full-on suit, uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. So now it's just like a 40-year-old man with makeup doing an Elmo impersonation. So you have some great cringe. Uh... It is by far one of the most cringe things I've ever oh, seen in my that later. It's Everyone just stop. Even you could just stop and go watch this gotta thing. drag that mm-hmm. to yeah, my yeah. folder <laughs> in my desktop. You know? it's like, and it's like it's like way too long, too. And he's like dead-eyeing the camera, too. It's oh like he, And like the thing is, like no one asked him to do it. He's like, oh, the world loves my Elmo impersonation so much that I'm going to do it. I don't, I don't think that's no, how that works. Not at all. And I thought of this, and I'm like, that not only does this fit the cringe, right? But I was like, oh, I wonder if, like, this is, like, a other... Like, I wonder if other people found this thing. Because yeah, it's yeah. like, I found it. I'm sure other people did. I turn on my TV, put on SNY. They're playing the clip on TV. It's, like, 4.30. There's a fucking radio show that, uh-huh. like, the, the radio shows that also have the television slot. Because, like, no one's going to watch at 4.30 Word. p.m. on the sports channel. So they just give them the TV slot, which I realized... It's just a podcast. Yeah. A radio show. It's it's a podcast. radio show on TV is a podcast. Exactly. I was like, it blew my fucking mind. I was like, oh shit. But uh, they were like roasting Jeff Passan on the show live. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I'm so happy that everyone else found this yeah. horrifying <laughs> video. But yeah, it's fucking creepy. I mean, a radio show on TV isn't really a podcast. It's a broadcast. Oh shit. This uh, is not a lot. See, see what Bobby did there? Yeah. See what Bobby's going to do here. Uh, when you started out talking about that, you were saying that you were watching like educational yeah. stuff and my brain flared up because education is something I wanted to talk about prevalently on the podcast. Weird. And then you proceeded to talk about that guy uh, singing Nickelback songs yeah. in Elmo drag. So, uh, very hard to segue that now, <laughs> but regardless. Now, nah, just, just rewind real quick. Education. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I don't, oh, well, th- uh, real quick, just to start off this, this chapter, there's this thing that I've noticed happen. It happens on Facebook a lot. I feel like I'm one of the few remaining uh, one of us that goes on Facebook. I go on Facebook. I get, I get random memes occasionally. Yeah, you know, I feel Facebook. like the guy in the wasteland with the gas mask with the walking mm-hmm. stick. But it's all old people. Comb- yeah, exactly. Dylan nailed it. It's just all middle-aged people, you know? <laughs> and I joke about this a lot, but, you know, years are coming by, and that's, like, that's worse than death for me at this point, is knowing sooner than later I'm going to be a Facebook guy. Oh, my like, God. You know I mean? Oh, no. So I'm just, I'm trying to enjoy. Happy birthday. You know? <laughs> exactly i'm trying to enjoy these last couple of years but there's this thing that i've noticed on facebook where uh pages will post clips from movies and they like these are like real bullshit bootleg pages where they're like need some inspiration watch this mm-hmm. and, then and it's like a movie it's a movie but instead of showing you like the whole movie they'll take like six clips and they'll play them in like you know they'll edit them together mm-hmm. the problem with doing that on facebook is very obviously it's going to be taken down for copyright infringement so what they do to combat this is they like pitch up the the movie. Okay, yeah. So, so you're trying to watch this like heartfelt emotional scene, and it's just like I'm not gonna quit on you. I mean that I kind. I got of... you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't tell me what to do. You know, it's yeah, like yeah, really yeah, hard yeah, to yeah, fucking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is weird. If you didn't know that, you'd just be on Facebook. Like, what the fuck? Why is yeah. this high pitch? Yeah. Like, man, this movie's weird. Yeah. Or they're doing the TikTok trend where they high pitched the vocals yeah, of a song. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm on Facebook and I see one of these videos and it's showing clips from a movie that I instantly recognize. I immediately was like, I haven't seen that movie in over 15 years. I look it up. Crazy enough, the movie's on YouTube. Great. I've never watched a movie on YouTube before. I'm not like it's not like somebody uploaded. Like it's one of the movies. Yeah, yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah. Has I got I got recommended that one of them. And uh, I sat back and I watched the Ron Clark story. Okay. Have you ever Have you ever watched this movie? No. Yeah. So this is a great great film. Okay. It stars Matthew Perry, and this is not sarcastic at all. This is genuinely one of my favorite. Wait, movies. wait, 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 wait. Okay. Is this like he teaches? A school. He does. Okay, I've so, seen. I've seen this. I, Bobby, I've seen this movie and I did not know the name of it. Yeah. And like, he slams the desk and walks exactly. out. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this movie. It's. I feel like this movie is burnt in the brain of every fucking millennial. Everyone. Kid. Yeah. Everyone. You've but seen you, a clip of it. I it did not TV. know the name of it. I feel like it's also that. Yeah. Too. It was a TNT original movie that came out in two thousand six or five. Very long time ago. But point is, is it's a story about this teacher named Ron Clark who used to teach in South Carolina, I think but eventually moves to Harlem in New York City to teach in an inner city school. Yeah. Uh, And it's based on a true story. So there's a real Ron Clark. And I actually, like, even though I've seen the movie, like, maybe three times at this point, and I've I've known about it for so long, Mm -hmm. I've never, like, actually looked up the real Ron Clark. Mm -hmm. And I looked up his Wikipedia page, and it turns out that, like, one of the main reasons that he kind of gained fame is because he wrote a book. And uh, in the movie, one of like the one of like the motifs or themes is that every time he learns something from the kids, he jots down a new rule and puts it up on the ceiling somewhere like rule 30, this rule 40, this. 
And uh, he wrote a book called like the Essential Fifty Five Rules for Every Classroom. Okay, yeah. And it was on the bestseller list for like fifteen weeks or some shit yeah. like that. So that's how we kind of like gained uh, some, Not- some yeah notoriety exactly. or in a good uh, way. Another thing I never noticed is I never really like brought myself to look up what this guy looks like. And uh, because on the Wikipedia page, it said something like, you know, when you look up personal life, you start reading it. Like one of the bottom blurbs was like, Ron Clark participated in the 2016 season of Survivor or some shit like that. What? Yeah. So I was like, oh, what does this fucking guy look like? I was expecting this to be like, you know, some old gray haired dude. First of all, he's like born in 1972. So he's like 50 or something like that. He's mad young. He well, looks yeah. super good. Yeah, yeah. You know well, that's I mean? why they had Matthew Perry yeah, play right? him. Like, like Matthew Perry looked older than him yes. at the time he was well, playing him. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. There's a picture of them together, and like he looks better than Matthew Perry. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And it was like they just had to find the best actor that was like could play that. Yeah. But yeah, that is super interesting to think about. Like when you think of 2005, I don't know why, but my brain would also go to like, oh, that's old. And then even before that, the book it's based on exactly. would also be old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another thing mm-hmm. is uh, that I kind of noticed is again, this is a movie that I hadn't seen since like probably when it came out mm-hmm. in 06. Watching it not only as an adult, but as an adult who has taught middle schoolers for like four plus years, mm-hmm. it hit on such a harder level for me. Especially because, like, I teach in an inner city school. Yeah. So, like, I deal with kids who are from shelters and who come from, like, you know, broken oh, homes. Oh, for sure. You just like get that. who I, Yeah. So, it's, like, one thing to watch it before being in that and being, like, oh, that's sad. And then, like, seeing it and actually crying because you know people who, like, this is happening to. And you're, like, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's insane. So, I think, honestly, because of, like, my, my life experience now, that's got to be a higher up movie for me. On oh, for list. sure. Yeah. Definitely go check out the Ron Clark story. It's a... It's, it's not a tearjerker, but it's very heartwarming. No, I think I think I really I didn't like it when I was younger because it was like I had what was the one with like the there was like a poetry one of a, a woman who taught like an inner city thing. That's what I remember. And when the, I the, think of the, that. The, there was like a woman who taught like a creative writing inner city thing, okay. and then there was like three movies. Oh, you're talking about. Uh, uh, freedom writers. Yeah, yeah, there was freedom, but then there was another one too. And I remember in like a, a two year span, it was like three or four movies that were like a teacher comes in and they are in the yeah. hood, and oh my god, and all one of the kids dies, one of the kids homeless. It's like okay, yeah. like so when I was younger, I really didn't like appreciate it. But I, I think guess. actually, if you rewatch Ron Clark, it, what's interesting about it is like the individual struggles that the kids go through are actually way more realistic. Yeah, like, for it's sure. Like kids who have mothers that are like. 18 because yep. they had the or not that's a rid- ridiculous but like in their late 20s because yeah. like they had them when they were 13 or 14 yeah, 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 or stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. or kids who are from foster homes or, or even like kids who like have to watch their younger siblings because their parents are working all mm-hmm. the time it's really realistic situations as opposed to like he's dealing drugs and stuff like yeah, that yeah, 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 they're yeah. more he's like he's in a gang yeah that exactly killed 20 people yeah i thought it was i thought it was a very good touching movie so yeah the ron clark story i mean dealing drugs isn't that imp- on like non-realistic but I mean, like, I've, it's like the goat. Yeah. You know no, I mean? it was uh, Freedom Riders no is a super dramatized movie. Yeah, it is. It's like <laughs> the kid got shot, and it's like a 10, 15 minute scene. Also, like, what's up, right. Jerry? I'm yeah, so we haven't bad. seen Jerry yeah, in a yeah, fucking we're... minute. I, t- yeah, I went man. into a whole zone there. Yeah, I mean, I've been like finishing up on this project we were working on, like the group project. So it was like taking up a bunch of time, but we actually like went to the Museum of Moving Image to present it. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, it was like a whole day thing. And it, it was like that day that it was like super hot. It was like ninety degrees here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, it was on. Yeah, on Wednesday. On Wednesday. So. And what were you presenting? The project itself. Yeah, we had to like make the. We had to like make like a like a concept of an app, and then like make slides to like present it and shit. Got it. Yeah. And it was like a group of four, like for most people. There was one group that made like an actual real cool thing. So D- Jerry's explaining this, right? Yeah. And uh, what probably really happened is you're all there, you watch the individual presentations and you clap and all that, right? Things uh-huh. like that. But what I'm picturing is Jerry's front and center on stage. <laughs> he's got the black turtleneck. I on, mean, I was at the podium. On, you know, <laughs> he's got the clicker in hand and he's like, imagine a world, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Imagine, <laughs> imagine an app, which. <laughs> That's what I see in my This app can is. massage your feet. You can f- feel the hands on your feet. Bro, it's like- I'm not lying to you when I say that there's a guy in my group that was trying to go that hard <laughs> with the presentation, bro. I fucking I'm knew not lying. Like, That's this guy amazing. was stressing me out, bro. Yeah, yeah of oh, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. 
He's like, yeah. he's like, make sure your posture. He's like, we all have to wear back braces. Yeah, bro. Like <laughs> he brought me my my the parts I was supposed to say. He brought them for me, printed out on index cards. <laughs> Amazing. This guy was going oh, hard, laminated, bro. laminated. I think this guy might be in the wrong profession. <laughs> this guy spent fifty dollars on at Office Depot. I think that preparing. guy should go into press. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, he works PR. Yeah, he worked, he worked a lot of Disney. Stuff. That's what he worked. Like Fucking, Disneyland. Uh, I mean Disney World. Oh, okay. So I was gonna say, like, you know, uh, can you say what the, like what the app was about? Or it was like a mood tracker app that we made. Okay. Yeah, I had to I had to like tone it down because because of that guy. He's like a real <laughs> difficult guy to work with. I feel like uh, I feel like the mood tracker app is <laughs> yeah. like in every like teenage sitcom. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm working on a mood tracker app. And or like mood... or like the mood r- just like the mood ring concept, but yeah, taken yeah, eight yeah. steps further. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like a big trope. <laughs> there was one really cool group that they made like a. Where it like picks a song and you get to like remix it and it's like actually remixable on the website. Oh, I was that's like, oh fire. shit! Like they actually made it work and shit. That's pretty that's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I like I like remixes. Yeah, and then like after we just like they paid for drinks for everyone. They were just like, we're going to a bar, and they were like, just say it's for pursuit. And we were that's like, fucking sick. oh wow, yeah, yeah. That's yo, hype. bro, I'm ordering like the craziest. <laughs> bro, people stayed to like two, and then the, we started like ten. That's <laughs> crazy. Fucking, Ordering free drinks and taking shots and shit. Yeah, I would. Oh yeah, bro. I'm, I would. I would literally order like a flight. You know what I yeah. mean? Like the shit. Like <laughs> the it's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like oh, eight different types of shots. It's like yeah, okay, I'm dying. Nice. I mean, if they were offering complimentary J's, you know, I'll definitely <laughs> light one yeah. up. And uh, that's the that's the company. I like. We need to work at. Yeah, though, I mean, for speaking sure. of J companies, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, one that's on the rise and one that I've kind of been uh, keeping up with. As uh, you may know, if you've been watching the Joystick Show for a bit, there's a, a, a piece of YouTube content that Dylan and I are very big fans of, and that is Architectural Digest's Open Door. Yes. You know, where they have celebrities and they show off their uh, properties where they live and whatnot. And one thing that I've noticed recently is that they've gotten some interesting people to come in and do like different, not versions of it, but whereas the norm was people showing off their homes, now there's people who show off like their studios. And like office they, tours. They did the nice, uh, the, not the, the Try the Guys, guys office. The studio, yeah. exactly. And there's another one too that I saw, but the one that I'm talking about is uh, Seth Rogen's uh, tour where he did a tour of Houseplant's headquarters. Yeah. So Houseplant, for those of you who don't know, is Seth Rogen's weed company. And it's really interesting because not only do they specialize in, uh, you know, like making strains of weed and mm-hmm. like selling it like that, but their kind of shtick is that they create uh, weed accessories and I guess like almost furniture pieces. Yeah, I've seen these. Yeah. That would actually like look nice in your home. Like the whole idea is that for a long time, weed has been this taboo staple. So right. they're trying to change the whole idea of like, you know, if you're a pot smoker, you know, instead of having people come inside your house and seeing the rolling tray with papers and this, that, and the third, what if they saw like some marble thing? So all of their pieces are like these actual cool accent things, yeah. but you open them up and it's like a lighter, an ashtray, I think a I've seen this, this one. and that. Mm-hmm. But the, 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 main, the main, not gripe I have with it, but the main thing to take into account is that this is like a luxury type of thing. Yeah. So yeah. the price is on it. Don't expect to be paying exactly. like 10 bucks yeah. for an accessory. No, they're very expensive. They use, they use like real materials. So hundreds, thousands, for, we're talking I mean, that like, kind of money. And considering like what I just said, it makes sense. Because yeah. like the whole point is they're making like higher living items. High quote, end, unquote, yeah it's high end and plus it's owners yeah Yeah. and it's a famous person so of course exactly like so and not even that they make like a lot of other cool products like one thing they do is he made a mixtape that's essentially it's just essentially a mixtape of songs but it comes there's one that comes in it's like indica volume one sativa volume one hybrid volume one so each one has like different songs that fit the mood Mm -hmm. and they're on vinyl which is kind of sick so it's like a whole like it's a whole fucking mood thing that he does he has like uh what the one i showed jose that was really cool is he has like a block of marble but on the top, it's a car lighter. So you mm. plug it in, and then when you you tap it in, you take it out. You could just light a cigarette or a joint just from that and put it back in. So it's like a hidden lighter that looks like a like an art piece type of thing. Yeah, it's, it's mad just, cool. You don't notice it. And uh, and then last but not least, uh, they make ashtrays, which is kind of like their bigger thing. One thing I showed you is they make the gloopy ashtray. That's, yeah. that's Dylan's, uh, you know, Dylan's alter ego. So I told him he's got to try to get some money off of that. Maybe. But my favorite part in the video is when they show off uh, their collection of antique ashtrays. 
So I don't know if uh, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast, but I collect ashtrays from different parts of the world. Yeah. So I don't travel that much, but when people go out to different countries or to different states, they always kind of know that my souvenir of choice is to bring back an ashtray. Yeah. So I've probably like fifteen at this point from different countries, different very states. Very nice. Very cool. But I low key think I'm going to take a delve into collecting some vintage ashtrays because they're, they're sick very as hell. Cool. They're mm-hmm. so cool, dude. It's not even like a lot of them are just like. They don't even look like functional ashtrays, but they're just like the way that, because a lot of them are ceramics, so mm-hmm. the way that they're built or sculpted just look fucking beautiful. Like they look like actual art pieces, you know? Yeah. And especially the way that they have them arranged based on like size and color. It's just like when you walk into that room, I know it's kind of silly to be talking about ashtrays, but you look at them and you're like, this is fucking impressive. Like, yeah, this it's is beautiful awesome. stuff. I mean, even one I have at my house. If you've ever seen, I have an I have an ashtray at my house that's maybe like this big, uh-huh. and it's like glass. It literally looks like a like a china dish. Yeah, but it's like no, it's an ashtray, that's you know. Sick, yeah. So I feel like it's that kind of vibe, but even nicer, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, definitely check out Houseplant. They make really cool products that Not you sponsored. probably cannot afford. Yeah. <laughs> if I could, I would want to get the. Uh, they have a like a standing ashtray that comes on like a bent metal piece so you could literally like sit in a chair and just have an ashtray that just like stands up right next to you type hmm. of thing. it's almost like a like a table side ashtray that's that's in, that's weird and i don't then, know uh, and the whole aspect is that the actual glass ashtray cup comes out out of the slot so you can clean it and, and um i got some ideas now yeah right i got some crazy ideas check I'm out like, uh, our version of house plan no just like hi- yeah or like hiring some like knowing someone that has a 3d printer and be oh like, yeah, be yeah. Like, hey like make this or background in like yeah. uh, engineering or mm-hmm. something and they could just or even anything someone that's just handy and can make <laughs> check a bunch out of shit. our version of house plant which is like we make uh products for like uh middle class stone yeah 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 it's <laughs> i can't think of it again but it's like it's like the really nice sheets at target you know yeah, like yeah, like yeah, it's like right? oh this is <laughs> this is this is target like that that's exactly. that's, that's high what thread we count are. sheets yeah. for sure yeah that, mm-hmm. that's our that's our goal i think mm-hmm. we found mm-hmm. i think we found a niche but even more ideas of just like i was thinking recently about like you know like bringing it back to our, our you know that ad our favorite show yeah. architectural digest but everyone will always have like a separate like room it's like oh this is the blank room or mm-hmm. it's like this is the whatever space and it's always like a custom room now i'm thinking like okay well now you can have like a smoking room or you can just have like a hangout room that yeah. you can smoke in you know mm-hmm. or just do just like a room that's like blank and you could destroy you know <laughs> or like yeah yeah you know like dylan's solid idea to buy a house near mine so that we could use it as a stunt house yes for the for the low <laughs> price of a house yeah definitely where i mean it was like a I mean you know it looked you know a little side project <laughs> a little investment it's more of just like a prank to bobby's like aunts and uncles yeah like, that was so dylan's <laughs> Dylan's whole idea, right, to bring it to bring it back full circle. Yeah, Dylan found a listing for a house near mine that kind of had the same uh, f- the same layout because most houses around here do yeah. have similar layouts. Very, like honestly, like to a T, Bobby's house, yeah, but yeah. like the kitchen was way shittier. One of the rooms had like a hole in the ceiling. Yeah, like, yeah. it was like so, way. So it was Dylan up. messaged me, and he was like, or at, I, th- I think you were here. But point is, he was basically like, I saw this house, and I was thinking we should get it. And I was like, okay, yeah, you know, just like let's see. Where also, this is by going. update, it's sold, so oh, okay. uh, the opportunity uh, is so now lost. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to house hunt now. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> but Dylan basically said that we should get this house so that we could essentially make it look exactly like this one, and then film content in here. But then just destroy it on yeah, a or whim, just, or just like Orbeez in your living yeah, yeah, room yeah, as yeah. a prank, not to our my parents or anything, but to people who know me. That would watch the videos and be like, "Oh my God, I can't believe they did this in yeah. Bobby and Dee's house." Yeah, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> so it's, it's like it's, it's such a great. It's it's like, see, like, that's like, hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> really sold that one, man. <laughs> just like throwing like a hammer at a wall, just or just pop. like yeah, or just like 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 you know yeah yeah like Bobby's tied up to the thing and we're just throwing shit at him, yeah, on like a spinning fucking... dartboard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some medieval BDS, BDSM. It's shit. like, oh, and it, you just imagine it on Facebook, your 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 abode, your place of living, Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're there, and people are just ah, Bobby got, got Bobby almost got an axe to the chest, but it went into his wall. <laughs> the bears will be so mad. It'd be like a talking point, yeah. man. It, our whole sh- our whole dynamic will go from like sensible, decently smart, very funny dudes to like party animal idiots you know what i mean <laughs> and which doesn't because it's again especially that we're like we're getting older like at the age where we're growing out of that yeah, stuff yeah, where we're, we're just going down and out like nope nope we're selling the out the reason boys. we haven't filmed the chronicles in a <laughs> we became chronicles but 
Oh man. Uh, but yeah, not maybe not worth the five hundred and seventy thousand. <laughs> oh, you don't think? No, you don't maybe think not. The house level. No. Thing. Maybe worth it. But. Let, me, let me take a look at my my topic list that yeah. I, wrote, I pre wrote down <laughs> for this podcast. I could talk about how I've uh, how I, I I've been randomly watching these jungle build videos. Have you seen these where these these guys will <sighs> fucking build a, a underground hut with oh like, oh a so, heated swimming yeah, pool? Yeah, I hate yeah. So this started. What? So this I know this trend started when like people just started <sighs> making videos of themselves in jungles and in like the middle of like a forest and they'll just dig yeah, a hole. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's one that's shit. how it started. Supposedly they're fake. Like yeah. that's what everybody says, and I believe it because the shit that they make is kind of insane. Mm-hmm. But it the whole the whole gist is like they're like nomadic lifestyle type thing. So they built these incredible scenes like underground huts or like swimming pool areas or mm-hmm. like. But they'll literally just do it by like digging holes into the ground, chipping away. They'll make clay. They'll patch the walls with this. Mm-hmm. So everything is made from like crafting and stuff like that. But they're oddly, you know. Well, that's why they're entertaining big. to watch. That's you know why they're I mean? big. Yeah, they're It'd always be- like uh, in, in a which I call like uh, when they're sped up, so they're not yeah. like watching it yeah. in, in full speed, but like you know you're you're seeing it's like real it. life Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, but you know you're just watching two very physically fit, probably South Asian dudes just go to fucking work building this thing in the hot sun, mm-hmm. and it's so cool. Mm-hmm. It's dope. I then, like. I, yeah. There's a whole like subsection of YouTube that's just like pleasure videos, like things that you look at and you're like, ah, yeah. And yeah. it could be anywhere from what you're talking about to like, I, I saw this one channel that has hundreds of thousands of subs, and he just deep cleans old rugs. I've seen I this. Like that is so cool. I've so seen this like one. he'll take this old rug from like the Middle East, like 1800s, and just cl- make it brand new. And it's like, damn, bro, you really clean. That's that like shit. that. I remember, I don't know who was here, but when I showed that video of the guy who like hydro dipped the different Air Maxes mm-hmm. and yeah. sneakers, like I d- have no fucking interest in that. I have no interest <laughs> in sneakers or hydro dipping. But I saw that video and I was like, all right, I'll just yeah. watch this for half. An I hour. saw one that was like uh, repairing animal hooves. Big one, yeah. big one, like which is crazy because it's like you think of like repairing a human foot. It's like a mm-hmm. surgery. Imagine repairing a hoof. It's like they grab a saw. They have yeah. like a special thing that they insert into the thing, and it's like look at the, look at her. She's walking. It's like yeah, she walked. Yo, apparently the horses love that. So yeah, when look, you take it off. They just fucking like they sketch it out, and then they just get to work building shit. It's, yeah, it's. I'm fake, just gonna skip though. ahead a little bit. Yeah. Oh, here's going oh, crazy. Oh, nobody look. Yeah, it's brought to you by Marvel Studios. Don't own those guys. They don't pay us. Yeah, they definitely don't. <laughs> God, of all logos that could fucking pop up, it's got to be like top five most recognizable. <laughs> so annoying. Owned by the one of the biggest corporations. <laughs> but yeah, you know they just hack away. Going to work. And then it ends up looking like crazy. It's I think that's my favorite part. <laughs> like... Because keep in mind, this is going to be like a, a swimming pool. Like, I think that's the point. But, like, whenever they go to get stuff, they, like, travel mad far and travel all the way back with all the materials. It's like, a... over and over again. And, yes, like I said, it's probably fake. It's I know, definitely but, like, fake. <laughs> <laughs> Look how beautiful this shit is. Yeah, right. <laughs> this shit's fucking molded with sand. You know how long it takes? It takes more than 100 days to sand something that yeah, much. Yeah, I know. And then, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, this whole fucking plumbing thing they have yeah, going Yeah, and it's down. blue now. How did they even play it? <laughs> yes, they did. You missed it. They fucking made a blue dye. You see? Oh yeah, they can fucking. And then they. Caked that's definitely. It. That's definitely not Bears two forty seven. <laughs> yeah. Right. Nah, that's lapis lazuli, bro. <laughs> Yeah, they went in a cave for that, bro. They needed to get a better pickaxe. They needed iron. They need. They had a bronze pickaxe. They needed an iron pickaxe. Was that a that stove? Shit. And then let's see when it's finished. When it's finished. Look at that. That is that, mad that, nice, though. That is mad Word. nice. But yeah, there's like hundreds of these. They mm-hmm. make all kinds of crazy shit. What do you think happens? Like, they just leave it there? Just like, oh, who wants it? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's like they might do it for, like, people who want to buy, like, private property, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, think of, like, think of being rich in Thailand. What the fuck are you going to do with your money, right? You're going to make a ma- giant mansion. You're going to hire these two young boys. You're going to eat a dog. To- <laughs> You went the two young boys when I went. <laughs> I just went. I just. I just want a brand new house built by these young strapping men. I don't oh, know you where want? You oh, going. that's all you want the two young boys yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. Right? I don't. Yeah. In Thailand, what else? What else would you do? What with else a young... would you do with two young boys and a dog in Thailand? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> why, why? What's up with the dog? <laughs> what do you? Oh what do you mean? God. What's up with the dog? You know? What's up, dog? <laughs> Stupid. Oh man. Oh shit. Mm.
Damn, I looked down at the timer and we have a lot to go. <laughs> of course we do. Yeah. <laughs> Why does it feel like we talked for forever? We did. We talked for a solid 25, 30 minutes or however long it is. It is. It is 30 yeah, minutes. You cool. nailed that shit. Yeah. Bang. On the. Bang. The. I went down my list. I mean, mm-hmm. everything else is just subsidiary shit. Yeah, we just gotta, we gotta stop, start playing those video games again. I mean, that was what yeah. was on my list, but I didn't want to talk about it. Why not? It. I don't know. I feel like... <laughs> yeah. I always try my a... best to talk everything non-video game related, yeah. get it out of the way. Like, that, me too, but my big thing is that it just can't be the only thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, there's a certain way you have to talk about it, because as I grow old, the more and more I watch old E3 yeah. cringe compilation which by the way imagine making an event that's so cringe that every company is like we're not gonna do this event we're all gonna do our own events yeah, that yeah. are just as shitty if not shittier yeah but less cringy yeah when is it when will the day come that a video game event will come that isn't cringy yeah like i really want to know and have you heard about like the the the, the xbox one no. Like the whole thing got leaked like we all like wow. everything yeah like everything got leaked down to like the second of when each thing is gonna happen wow oh my god like and people were, time stamp. but apparently it didn't leak through xbox end it leaked through bethesda's end oh shit. so like some of xbox's shit is still good but all of the bethesda shit is just Damn. like yeah and it's like who like just come on is that still a thing e3 yeah it's no right? i don't think it is yeah which has, has but even gone. before then it was like people yeah. lost the uh People lost the sauce. They it was just the brand that people wanted. They were like, E3 is the video game thing. Yeah. <laughs> even like GDQ, like, or, or not even just a single out GDQ. I like, there's no like chill speed run event. You know what I mean? No. And when they did try to make one, it was like, it, it got riddled with controversy yeah. and it ended up not even happening. Fucking, uh, and what was I going to say? Uh, to swing this also, just into like, I guess, like cringe video game stuff, I was going to say, uh, I had a topic that I, kind of wanted to bring up last week but i can kind of you know swiggle it on right here yeah i had no idea g4 came back the television network mm-hmm. and it, it's like they're doing the same thing that they used to do like their two major shows are attack of the show and x play yeah, x play but like it's completely like the vibe is just weird like i guess specifically with attack of the show like they actually so you remember attack of the show used to just be two solid hosts like yeah. it was kevin Pereira, and he would have like a female co-host yeah. olivia munn or who yeah. was, uh, blonde chick what was her name? Uh, Blonde Candace, woman. Candace, Candace Bailey, Sarah Underwood did the news, whatever, right? Yeah. So now how it works is it's like, it's kind of similar to the Joystick show. They have like a pan, like a panel of five hosts. That rotate. And they rotate mm-hmm. kind of thing. And there's even episodes where like a bunch of the hosts are on at the same time. And then there's others where it's like two people. Yeah, but okay. like they'll even take turns like per episode at the table. Uh, and they'll just like cut to a different camera uh, angle to the other two on a couch or some shit like that. So it's a weird type of thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. But like uh, they have this guy, Kevin's back on it. This guy's there. Kasim G is one of the hosts. Okay. Um, Interesting. What's this guy? I forget his name, but he's like one of Ludwig's friends. I think Will Neff, I think is his oh, name. Oh, Will Neff. Oh, He's cool. one of the hosts. Yeah, I like Will Neff. He's so they got, they got some people there. But He's, uh, like, he's also a uh, fellow podcaster. Yeah. Nice. But it's, it's like a whole different vibe because like I guess the whole – charm of attack of the show is that it, it you know it tackles like pop culture and things that are happening relevant but pop culture nowadays just sucks you know what i mean like they all there's uh, it's they're like reviewing tiktoks and shit yeah it's just very like you can't get like too popular with it and then like all of the niches that g4 covered are now already on the internet and they do way better yeah i was about to say it's almost like g4 started what's ever, what we're doing right yeah now. like it's g4 like, existed in its own era because it's like there wasn't an outlet for that yet exactly and then once justin tv into twitch came out and then once like gaming culture got bigger and then lost again i don't know like i feel like all of those groups like have their own like niche now and that that's another interesting thing I'm pretty sure Attack of the Show gets streamed onto Twitch. Yeah. So I think what happens is it I does. think the show gets streamed onto Twitch, and then the VOD, quote unquote, is what gets on put it. on TV. Like, which is like so backwards. It's a little weird. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just like just 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 nail the coffin the TV. Or it might be live. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Because it's like I think TV is gonna die out. Because this is another. Yeah. And uh, I meant to mention this before when I was talking about the baseball thing. But neither the Yankees or the Mets are on TV tonight. Yankees are on Amazon. Mets are on Apple TV. Oh, that's weird. Oh, man. 
this is it, man. They're, like yeah, sports are done. Di- cable is absolutely gonna be sports nothing. Sports is in, like, the last nail in the coffin. Ten, yeah, yeah, because it's like sports are the only reason why you have TV. In mm-hmm. fact, if you call your TV provider and say, "Hey, can I not have any of the sports channels?" Your bill will go down by thirty bucks. That's crazy. Because all of the ta- a lot wow. of the tax and a lot of the stuff goes into all of those t- all those channels. Yeah. And if you want the extra sports channels, oh, that's an extra yeah, fifty bucks because right, right. it's like you know yeah. more stuff. But what what I found interesting was that like since the show streamed to Twitch, it does use that whole like chat element, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it can have the whole interactivity where the host can literally be like, "Chat, what do you think about this?" Yeah. Like, put up a yeah. poll and stuff like that. Which also is weird. I love the chat. It's also it's weird because yeah. like TV has done that before, and it's always so. It's always bad. <laughs> yeah. It never goes well. It or never it's like, does. Or it's like someone doesn't check the sensor, and it's like, "Hey, they use the hashtag." <laughs> but I remember there was one I saw, and I was like, it was on like bar stool or something, and it was like a guy tweeted something at a minor league baseball game, and they put it on the screen and then the camera cuts and he's right there he's like i did it <laughs> yo have you seen the new trend with these kids at the baseball game when they get the freaking speed the screen yeah. <laughs> what, what, what did they do jerry <laughs> i'm not doing show it. us <laughs> show us jerry what did yeah, they do but now i like i want to see people get unique with it like someone in the salt pep the salt figures, you, man. So, someone you know? gets it someone gets it cheese. and they just do some crazy i should edit this as if it's like you know like the kiss cam season <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for you, like you need. I'm waiting for ones that it's like it cuts and it's like a three person routine. Bro, I would pay oh to bring. God. I would. I would pay for Jose's ticket <laughs> to get him into the fucking arena, whatever sport it is, and then I will pay separately to get him on camera because Jose will perform the fuck out of that. You understand me? He will do some crit. Yeah, even if it's not that. Jose has done some air fellatio that is like <laughs> it, it gets you uncomfortable. Yeah, like, it's like it's like what, hold it on. quickly goes from funny to like nope. Okay. <laughs> It goes from funny to oh no to okay we have to talk this is oddly what happened to you as a child <laughs> like, <laughs> you're loved you yeah, know like we what happened? it's okay he's thought about this intricately <laughs> like the ins and outs maybe maybe he's just really good at charades or maybe yeah. he just knows what Can we just what a man wants charades. i think that's what it is we gotta play charades with jose now we gotta make like do people still play sure i guess you have jackbox games that was kind of like the game we played what was it the other day at the game night the movie game uh, yeah, 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 the yeah, dice yeah. But I feel like no one's gonna be like, let's play charades. Oh, it's we did a thing. Yeah. We had a movie night. Yeah, we all. Game game night, yeah. I did a night. Killer game Lion game King impression, man. I mean, uh, what was it, Simba? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> fucking Jerry just roared, and we no. were like, Lion King. Yeah. Sick. I mean, I got some good ones too. I got, I got Saving Private Ryan out of. <laughs> oh yeah, Dylan shot a gun, and it was Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> I think that was by far the most that impre- was impressive. That was almost as impressive as when, uh, when you Dylan said without- Finding Dory. <laughs> But yeah, I, I guessed a Disney movie without knowing it. We got like two or three picks on a row. Yeah. So I just guessed that the next card was like card Finding would... Nemo. And it was Finding Nemo. And he just he got the card instantly. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty crazy. That was fun, though. I want to do it again. Mm-hmm. It was Jessica, I, I had already said like after it happened, I forgot who I was talking to, but I was like, yeah, I want to do it again. It was mad fun. I was thinking about doing it in a month. And then Jessica's in DR for a wedding, but I didn't know where she was. So I just saw Palm Tree. So I was like, where are you? And then, like, the first thing she said is after she told me, she was like, when's the next game night? I'm super down. So I was mm-hmm. like, lip, this has got to be a thing. We got to we gotta bring it, it back. Is. Who was I talking Dang. to? I said, next time, we got to put a little money into it, you know? Yeah. We, little, I mean, we, we hinted that Ooh, at the end. Sure. Get a little, like, you know, $10 buy-in to game night. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Winner take all. Yeah. Or uh, any type of... Uh... Any type of other game would be crazy. I yeah, have some drinking games to show you guys. I was just happy that we actually played board games. We hadn't done that in forever. Yeah. We actually played like five or six. Underrated, of those. underrated cool. buys for sure. Yeah, for sure. I want to play one of the more like intricate ones, like uh, Unstable Unicorns or something like that. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. get a little competitive with that. I'll go get it right fucking now. Bro. <laughs> Yo, they were going crazy with the board games at that freaking thing, like afterwards, because like everyone's, you know, we're all software engineers, mad nerds. Nerds, yeah. Yeah, right. there was mad board games and mad cards. Board games are fun. They man. have these, these like set of like card games is like these the boxes are like this small like a little like playing card size they have like 10 of them it's like from a like a certain company uh-huh. mad, some of them are mad sick nice you have to figure it out Custom i'm gonna buy a few of them fucking uh and then last but not least to keep it on the game thing like we we started off earlier we got to get back into this yeah. wave of gaming together yeah there was like this game. thing where it was like if you have something to do you do that but yeah. if you don't have anything to do you game you get on the game <laughs> and you fucking game and there was a very long time for like the past two. I don't know if this speaks more about myself or I, I work. Okay, I go to work two days a week, and the rest of the days I edit and I do shit here on joystick. But I am playing video games like four hours a day. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I find he's I find getting it in. He's getting he, it he, in. You squeeze it in. Yeah, we all. But I was always yeah. playing. But like for like the past two months, like nobody would be on. Like 
Jerry and Jerenson and I would probably pay Apex every, play Apex every now and then, but that'd yeah. be like the majority of mm-hmm. it. But especially lately, like we've been trying to play more like uh, Fall Guys. We just played Fortnite together, no, which is, is lit. You need to get everyone needs to get back into that. Fall game, Guys is that fun. Game changed. I feel like <laughs> Fall. I feel like Fall Guys was fine, and then it just like they didn't yeah. change it quick enough, and everyone was like, "Oh, you know what I'm gonna do after this podcast? I'm gonna play some fucking Fall Guys. Oh, well, Why is this like, fun as hell? Fall Guys is so much fun, and Fall Guys is also the game where it's like you can get people on board. Like I remember I was over at my brother's house one night. This is way back when like Fall oh, Guys yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. first hype, and they were asking me like what it is, and I was like, I just explained to them i was like imagine wipe out but like a game but like a game yeah. and everyone's fun and then like you get to customize the character everyone's into it it's fun yeah. any game where you can customize your character people are usually into it yeah we're you know what the fuck you seeing what i'm seeing jerry <laughs> i'm not seeing what i'm seeing. <laughs> I should see what you're seeing oh you missed it it was an asian woman on about a five foot i saw the end cycle <laughs> but she threw a stack of plates and balanced them on her head oh, it was pretty shit. fucking insane yeah you missed oh, out on that shit I, that reminds, out on that that too, reminds right? me of something horrifying. Can I talk about it? Oh, go for it. Okay, yeah. So uh, I was reading about uh, America's Got Talent Extreme uh-huh. the other night. Oh, I didn't know and, that's a thing. Yeah, so that was a thing. I think somebody died on that. But. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is this is what I'm getting into. Uh, so uh, before the show even aired, they were doing rehearsals and three people almost died during rehearsals. Fuck. So they were like, yeah, we're not even going to make the show because we can't promise that people will survive. Wow. It's a whole insurance issue. If you didn't realize, that's why people do singing shows. Survivor and Big Brother are mostly fake. Yeah. It's because you can't actually do those things because mm-hmm. people will get fucked up. Yeah. A guy did a stunt where he would do an escape rope thing as two cars were coming in like a pendulum. I have heard about this. Think about what would happen. So he wasn't able to escape. Boom. Wow. Not only was he crushed, the cars had a little bit of gas inside them. They exploded. This guy had huge burn. He almost died. Everyone thought he died. He was. He actually survived and he actually Crazy. did like a full recovery. Uh, but there was like a couple other people. Someone like stabbed themselves accidentally. Another person did like a routine like that, and they fell off the unicycle, cracked their head open. Oh, it was like multiple things, and it's like, yeah, maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe, maybe this is the one Simon Cowell got wrong. Yeah, you know? maybe, maybe we just maybe we sing. I've got an idea. Let's do what we've always been doing, but just have people fuck each Deadly. other. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> no, uh, I think there was like a, a foreign version of it where like a motorcycle stunt guy like he uh missed a jump or something oh, and he shit. landed early and he died oh like, damn wow. yes. i saw the video granted it's not graphic really but it's just like he just slams into the ramp or like it's a dirt ramp like he was supposed to hit the yeah. down thing and he just kind of mm-hmm. hits into it type of thing Ooh. but like yeah those shows are fucking stupid dangerous <laughs> and weirdly enough like I feel like my favorite ones that I see on America's Got Talent Extreme are like the ones that aren't even extreme. Like I showed Joey one a couple weeks back where it was like this group of guys who have a super, super intricate drone show. Mm -hmm. And they put on this crazy where like the drones are programmed ridiculous, have like these crazy lights on them. And they make like these three dimensional shapes and objects in the air. Nothing extreme about it. They just needed space to do yeah, it. Yeah, it that's outside. that's a big trend, I think, too. Yeah, is this? Yeah. It's things that they want to film at a separate location, exactly. and you can't really do that on stage. A, yeah. Exactly. It was a few guys that did that one, right? It was like four of them. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen team. that one. I think one of the whole deals was like one of them wasn't into that, but he had something they needed, so he was like, "Yeah, I just kind of joined." Or whatever. <laughs> Yes. And that's why he's so out of place. It's like a couple of uh, like you know youngerish guys, and then one guy. That's yeah, like and then older. there's one guy who's older. That's what it was. Yeah, mm. that's exactly what it was. <laughs> it was like a professor, I think. At yeah, like a yeah, college. yeah, yeah. And he's, he's like, like, oh, I thought the kids were doing a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even though they're all they older. Eighty-seven drones. <laughs> so I just got them eighty-seven drones, which is crass a lot of money, man. Yeah, for a I mean, I, I got one last topic we can swing it into. Yeah, I could talk about what's been playing behind Dylan's head. Past it's a fucking up. sport, sport. Yeah. These NBA finals almost done. Maybe I just wanted to ask you guys. You guys have any predictions? I mean, for mm. reference, it's uh, it's oh, it's two commercial. to one. Boston is up as of now. We're filming this on Friday, I mean, June tenth. Right, right. On the night of Game Four. By the time, uh, let me think. What's the math on this? There'll be two games more after this. So technically speaking, if Boston wins this, this could be over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This could be done though. But the thing, it's weird because it's like there's no real underdog, even though the Celtics are kind of, but the Celtics are so good. Yeah, they are And good. they always make the playoffs. So yeah. it's kind of like, okay, they're not really the fucking underdog. Though. Who, the Celtics? Yeah. They don't always make the playoffs. Yeah, but they may, but you look at their, like historically, I'm saying. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that's what I mean. I mean, it's been like 10 plus yeah, years yeah, yeah, since yeah, the yeah. last time. Like Celtics, yeah, yeah. Lakers, Lakers, always Fucking, there. Uh, what was I going to say? I have kind of a claim. 
I, I honestly speaking, I'm a big uh, I'm a big fan of not liking Boston. So that's what I'm a fan of. Yeah. But that being said, I do think that they can easily win. Very. I mean, me and Dylan were talking about it yesterday. They're 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 like one of the best teams in the league, if they're not the best good. right now. That being said. I think no matter what team is gonna win, I, I see a game seven coming. I mean, I would I would like to see like uh like Warriors win game seven or some shit like heartbreak. I would love that too. Like yeah, yeah. crazy, like like fuck out of here because it's like, like it's like it's like entertainment. You know, that's what I care. Like yeah, that's what's most important. Like right now, I'm watching the NHL playoffs, and the NHL is great, but the NHL playoffs is very much like a who can survive. Okay. Because it's just a bunch of game sevens and everyone's just running full speed at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, because like in the NHL, it's kind of, I don't know if the NBA is like this, but are like fouls called differently? Or is it kind of like the same type of deal where like fouls are the same amount? Because in, in the hockey playoffs, half the fouls just go away. It's like, oh, we don't see it. You know? Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I just imagined that that would be hysterical in the NBA, where it was like, oh, you're allowed to foul anybody. In fact, that was a. Uh, that would be crazy. <laughs> there was a game I was watching. It was a while back. I think it was back when, like, the Nets were still in round one. Or am yeah. I, it, point is, it was either Playing round one or round maybe, two. Yeah. But the point is, is uh, they were saying, I was watching, like, the commentators were specifically saying that the, 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 uh, the officials are specifically like calling fouls on shit they weren't calling in the regular season in the postseason. Oh, so it's like the opposite now. Yeah, like yeah. now they're getting way more like they, specifically what it was is they were calling fouls on players who weren't even like had the ball. Like they would just call it on on the fucking player on the offside or whatever. Mm-hmm. Wow. But they, they were getting mad vigilant on it, and they were specifically said they were like, I think it's fucked up that they were like because they were they had this whole discussion where they were like, do you think it's annoying that they're making calls, this scrutinizing? They were like. It's just annoying that it's inconsistent because mm-hmm. they didn't they didn't make these calls the whole season. That's the yeah. Uh, when it comes to like officiating in sports, that's like the main thing. Yeah. Like especially with baseball, where it's like you know what's a strike and what's uh-huh. a ball. It's not necessarily that like you have to keep it correct. It's that it has to be the same. It's consistent. Yeah. Like you have to you could be you could make the wrong call over and over, but make that wrong call the whole game. Yeah. Don't make yeah. the wrong call for the first time and be like, oh, and I was wrong. It's like no. Now you have to keep stick, it the stick same. With it, yeah. <laughs> I, it reminds me. I was watching a, a comp- video compilation. To remind anytime I watch anything with baseball, it just immediately reminds me of Dylan. But yeah. it was a compilation of just like umpires at like random games, like even little league games or B league games that are just horrible, just yeah. like the worst, and people hating on them. There's this one guy who showed up to a game full on drunk. That camera stopped recording. Why? 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 But uh, yeah, there's like a, a fucking umpire who's like literally like stumbling over the fucking like little league kid and shit like that. Crazy. And they're like, like, bro, like, <laughs> how do you just let a guy like yeah, that yeah, play? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. like sometimes it's like the other end where like you'll see an umpire getting it like way too much, uh-huh. like you're getting it way too hard. But then sometimes it's like they fucking deserve it. Yeah. Keep talking. I gotta. Man. I remember when I was in little league, I didn't know what bat flipping was. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was. I was. I mean, I was running with the bat a little bit. And oh, when, oh. when you run with the bat a little bit and you drop it, he counts that as a bat flip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does, it does, it does, it does. But I, bro, I, I'm all about the showboating. I'm all about it. There's no such thing. I'll oh, be respectful or don't be a showboat. No, be a fucking showboat. <laughs> it's the best. You need to be like as performative as possible, especially yeah, on TV. A, or yeah, exactly. whatever, or anything, or it's like you pop off and show it, like yeah. you you did that, you know. No word. All right, this camera's being fucking annoying. I think this is a good time to swing it to the jam and the yam. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I like some foods. I like yam some. I like jam. some. I like some. Yo, speaking of jams and yams, for a whole, hopefully I'll be able to figure this out real quick. Fucking, yo, I was I was I was listening to that same podcast and they were talking about like fucking who was it boxing? They were talking about like uh, what's this guy? He's like a heavyweight champion. Starts with an F. Francis Nagano. Francis, yes. Oh, that guy, yeah, yeah. And he was talking. He was like, because there was, it's like a bunch of people from like different like entertainment. So he's like, you know, they play baseball and play basketball. You don't play fighting. (laughs) (laughs) You can't make. You can't worry about making it entertaining. You just have to win. You know. (laughs) Yeah, that's that. That's a very poor combat sports are a completely different beast. I mean, that's entertaining for that same reason though. Copyright. Glad that was under a few <laughs> seconds. We're good. We're doing jam and yam. We Dylan, sure are. Jimothy. Hello. Yam-a-thing. My yam of the week is Stay Away, Please by Flowers for You. Very good beat. Like an emo rap song that turns into a hyper pop song midway through. Very good. Mm. I feel like a lot of. Like, I'm just hearing. Like, it'll just be like a normal song. And then halfway through, you'll hear like a poof, poof, hyper pop beat. And I'm like, <laughs> damn, bro. You really had to throw that in. But sometimes it fits. I feel like it's good. Yo, my song. Hi. 
This this camera's fucking like is being mad annoying. This has never happened before. Very close. In oh shit! Sure. You have a problem with that? No, it's a, like we're like we need the kiss cam going. <laughs> Be right back, uh, Jerry. What's your yo? Your, my song of the week. It's gonna it's gonna be an Afrobeat song that they were playing in the lobby. I had to I had to Shazam it. It's called uh, "Sip" by Joe Boy. Oh shit! Yeah, sounds good. Joe Boy, yo, Afrobeat's coming up, man. Oh, for sure, yeah. About to become an Afrobeat artist. It's <laughs> Queen Queens. Bobby, what's your jam? What's your jam of the week? Give me a fucking second. This is annoying. One second. That sounds like a uh, one of those long. Uh, if you don't fix it quick enough, then the, the other camera's songs. gonna run out, and then we have no camera. <laughs> 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 it's <an> easy, yeah. <laughs> What's up, fellas? <laughs> Uh, we got, we got, G- oh, this is weird. This is fucking strange. <laughs> this is a whole different thing. Holy hell. The mic is higher and everything. Uh, fucking, hey. we're going to go with jam of the week will be, oh man, I, uh, it's going to be a Bad Bunny song. Let's, let's get crazy hey, with it. It's going to be El Apagón by Bad Bunny. It's, <laughs> it's, a, that's so funny. it's a fire ass song. It's got some, you know, like hard style music. And uh, it goes to this never-ending loop of somebody who just goes, Me gusta la chocha de Puerto Rico. Which, yeah. You know, you, you, know the translation. You, you could translate yeah. that for you. So it was really fun playing that song, especially around my mom, <laughs> who was vibing to it at first because she thought it said, Me gusta la chacha de Puerto Rico. <laughs> and then I was like, because then she, uh, I forgot how I, she, I said it. And then she was like, no, no, no. Me gusta la salsa de Puerto Rico. And I was like, no. no not, He's saying that? chocha. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about other stuff. But that is going to be Jam of the Week. I don't think I've ever had a Bad Bunny song be Jam of the Week. So then I'm t- taking a page out of the Joey hey, book. How the fuck do you sit here and not just watch the TV the whole time? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. My attention span right? is so... I'm watching, I'm like, fucking... That's I'm like, me, man. I'm like, damn, that wasn't a foul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, swing back over. Let me see if I can this time. we'll end this shit. That's what I'm saying, man. You seen that freaking... Alley right there. Also, watching sports on mute is like the weirdest thing. I can never do it. I mean, I know we're uh, doing it because it's a show, but like it, it like it's weird because you're just kind of like, what happened? Yeah, you need the guy saying. Like, thing. I noticed that like I was talking about a uh, sports radio before, right? And I was realizing how like if I had a car, I'm not listening to music because I'd go way too hard to it. Mm-hmm. Like I'd be listening to a song, you know, and you're like that. Or if it's like a heavy song, you're like, damn, like that's why I like good workout music, right? Yeah. It makes you want to like you know move. If I'm in a car, I want to just like focus, mm-hmm. and I feel like I'd listen to sports radio or I'd listen to like baseball games. Like if you've ever heard like a baseball yeah. game on the radio, fucking a vibe. Yeah, yeah. I can't listen uh, to music in the, the car when I'm driving. He's pitching. It's a uh, ball outside. All right, just <laughs> sorry, just in case. Sound speed. You know that little magic behind the scenes. How this film the clapper works. Are we done? Did we do everything? Yeah, yeah. I was jamming it with the uh, outro time. Right? I like how I fixed the whole situation Adam. right in time for the, for the fucking ending of the show. Right in time to say thank you for joining us here at the ah! Joystick Show. I'm yeah. very sorry that this camera fritzed out. Thankfully, it was like right at the end. I've got to go back just to just to double check that. But um, yeah, it was a fun one. Got to talk about a lot. Got to talk about some education, pretty some good video. ashtrays, a lot of sports, some games. Sports, a lot of games. Happens. Yeah, it's like I just like we shoved all of our interests and just kind of like it's like we have there. a podcast. Wow, right? yeah, it's we just talk insane. about shit. I even yeah, got to happens. get some perspective on the other side of the table. I think yeah. that was really interesting. In fact, <laughs> that was arguably my favorite part of the podcast. We even I'm talked about lie. David Cox or whatever his name is. What? The guy, the, the, the Matthew Perry is a teacher. What was his name? David Cox, yes. We talked about the David, <laughs> David Cox, Cox story. David Cox, the teacher. And totally not the Ron Clark story. <laughs> but, you know, Bro, so just close. insert white name here, insert I guess. Insert white name that's 3-5 or 5-3. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're working in. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'd really appreciate it if you could like this episode, like we said earlier. If you could subscribe. If you could subscribe. If you could subscribe. Subscribe, yeah. To the Team Joystick YouTube channel. And just to leave you with a little bit of a comment, do you collect anything? Are you a collector of sorts, of anything at all? Is it Funko Pops? Is it ashtrays like me? Is it, Is video it sports games? memorabilia it like my uncle be. does? <laughs> yeah. Do you collect something? Put it in the comments. I want to see what you collect. I collect ashtrays from across the world. I said or that. Or do you collect W's? It's a good one. That's what Jerry collects. Yeah. Uh, but last, but that, but do, but, yeah, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> 